So what is the difference in, in, in character, in nature, between coffee and tea? I mean, if you think of the, of the coffee nations, it's, it's Italy, isn't it, and Spain, and the Americas, I suppose. And if you think of the tea nations, then I suppose it's India, and China, and Japan, and the UK. So there seems to be a difference there, doesn't there? Greetings, fans of the esoteric, the stylish, and the surreal, and welcome to another edition of Robert Farah's Tea and Tara. Maybe the tea nations are a bit calmer, or at least maybe they're pretending to be. I want a nice calm edition of Tea and Tarot uh, this week. So I'm just going to talk about how to colour in your own tarot decks. And this might sound a bit um, bit babyish. But the thing is, if, if you're a, a Rider Waite Smith tarot reader, you're kind of stuck with the Rider Waite Smith deck. I believe Pamela Coleman Smith, the illustrator of the deck, wasn't responsible for the, the colouring. I imagine when they made the deck, they, they never had any idea that it would be as iconic and, and as long lived as it has been. And so I think in some ways, even though it's a, a very beautiful production, there are things about it that were a bit rushed. There's a couple of, of Pamela Coleman Smith's drawings that look a bit rushed. And there's quite a lot of the, the colouring, if you look at it very closely, which feels rushed. There is a tradition in um, secret occultist societies that, that if one is learning tarot, one is encouraged to colour in one's own tarot pack. We live in the age of photocopying machines. And what you can do is quite easily, you can download black and white templates like that and you can colour them in very carefully and then you can reduce them. So I'm feeling very um, excited because I've just completed the Mage Arcana of my self-coloured pack and they're looking very nice actually, I'm amazed. There's my, there's my Magician. Um, there's my Lover's card. There's my Death card. There's my Temperance. What I wanted was, I, I wanted a deck that would look like the Waitsmith deck. So I didn't want it to be wild and completely crazy and psychedelic. I didn't want to change all the colours, but I popped in the occasional surprise, the, the occasional indulgence. Like I gave myself a, a pink sphinx for the, um, for the Wheel of Fortune card. And, and some of the colours I've actually made richer and darker than in the classic Rider Waite Smith deck. In this, I was sort of encouraged by the Albano Waite tarot. This was done in about 1970 by a crazy guy called Frankie Albano. And those were the days when people were very excited by colors. And as you can see, he went a bit mad. Um, look at the strength card. A lot of the time he just he just gave the, made the colors richer and darker because he, I think he felt that the that the original was a bit insipid. There's the moon there. Sometimes he was quite naughty and he gave, you know, he did the orange skies. Now the thing about the Albano weight deck is that you know you when you buy it now you buy a facsimile edition. It's a repro from US Game Systems. I mean the back is quite high class, you know, quite chic, but really that's where it ends. The cardstock is a bit crap. It's slippery. It doesn't have any kind of texture or waxiness or, or linenness. And the, the facsimile, the, 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 how they've reproduced it is, is absolutely appalling. If you look at the, um, it's just inky. It's just, a, a, looks like a horrible Xerox. And especially on the court cards, you know, you imagine how much detail Mr. Albano might have put into the colouring. And it certainly is not visible in the current US Game Systems version. But, you know, you can see, you can see the, the, the excitement about colour that was there. The Eight of Cups is, is not one of Pamela Coleman Smith's greatest moments, but... You know, the current facsimile of the Albano weight deck makes it look 
even worse. When I did my colouring in, I had the Albano weight deck on, on one hand and I, and I had the, the classic, you know, Rider Waite Smith deck on the other hand. And so I, I, I just tried to make the colours rich and without going too far overboard. And some of my colouring is, is very, very conventional. Like here, for instance, I've, it's the star. And I thought, well, the star is a night scene, isn't it? So that blue should be a little bit richer than you get in your, in your normal Rider Waite Smith. And there, there's my pink Sphinx. And so I allow myself a little bit of, little bit of, what's the word? License. My emperor is slightly inspired by Frankie Albano's emperor. I think he has the emperor in purple. And when I get to the court cards, I'm a bit of a devil. I just, I kind of redesign their clothes, really. So there's the page of cups. And I, I you know, I just chose the colours myself. So sometimes what I do is I, you know, I actually have the Rider Waite Smith and the Frankie Albano in front of me. And sometimes I, I look at them quickly and then put them away and just carry on and colour as I want. The result is, is really lovely. Um, I went to the photocopy shop and I just, I photocopied my big um, colourings in and reduced by 50%, actually 55% because I wanted a bit of extra oomph. And then I um, gave myself curved corners with a, a corner cutter and, and voila. I didn't print on both sides, I just put a little Chinese Robert stamp on the other side. Not expensive, but not cheap. Uh, they cost, you know, about 80 cents, euro cents. So the whole pack, if I photocopied the whole pack, it would probably cost 50 or 60 euros, which I'm not too um, keen to do. I believe that online you can get, um, there's a place called Making Playing Cards and you can send in your artwork and they will produce your whole deck for you. The whole thing, just one copy for about 20 euros which I think is incredible. And then you would get the kind of like the authentic factory cut thing that you get with a pack of cards, which is so nice. I just want to show you why I'm so happy, why I'm so pleased with myself at the moment. Because when I, I came back from the photocopy shop, I saw that my, my deck really does have a level of detail that the other commercially produced decks don't have. Here's a classic Rider Waite Smith. I've had this since the 90s. There's Temperance. Um, there's, there's the, this is Pam's artwork only deck from Drive Through Cards, I think. It's quite nice, it's a bit bright. There's Temperance. This is uh, Frankie Albano's Temperance. He allowed himself to add a rainbow in that one, feeling a bit devilish. And this is the Centennial, which I love actually. It's the, the sepia tinted deck from US Game System. Very nicely produced. You know, they can make nice things when they want to, can't they? But there's my one. It's slightly bigger because I did it at 55% instead of 50. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, I know I didn't draw it, but the coloration is slightly more accurate and slightly nicer. If you look at my magician here, the, the level of detail on, on the flowers that you can get is just more than you would get on a commercially produced deck. So, um, feeling very pleased with myself there. And I am now going to discuss um, a few uh, colouring in techniques. So it's going to be a bit like a kids TV programme this week. If you're um, too sophisticated for that sort of thing, then I'll be back next fortnight with a sophisticated review of some 1970s decks. But for now, let's, let's talk about some um, crayons and gouache and masking tape and stuff like that. So here we are, we've got our, our templates. Here they all are, marvelous things. I will tell you where you can get them online. There's the 10 of cups, here's the, the nine of cups. So you'll probably get yourself um, some sort of surface, some sort of tray. You know, you'll secure it, won't you, with some masking tape. And then here's the really clever thing that I suggest you do. 
Let me tell you what we're going to do. And, you know, you can you can have that there if you want or not, depending on how wild and wacky you're feeling. But I have got these aquarelle crayons here. And what that means is they're pencils, which are very soft. And later, after you've colored it in, you can go over it with some with a with some water and and the and the colors become they sort of turn into watercolors so what you get with this system is you know you have immense accuracy with a pencil more than you would with a paintbrush and yet if you can still see the pencil marks afterwards you can go over it with a wet paintbrush and it softens it and it, it looks very magical so let me just show you here get our lovely pencil sharpener it's not rocket science, is it? This may look very laborious, but I'm going to... Well, it is laborious. It's meant to be. What's happening is you are spending time with your tarot cards and you are, you know, you're staring at each one for two hours solid and you're getting to know every single square millimetre of the designs. And after you've done this, you really, you know your cards. And the thing about tarot is it's, it's, non, it's a non-verbal thing. It often partly bypasses the verbal side of your of your mind and goes straight into your brain on a sort of image level. Okay, so there we are. Now I'm going to be a super devil and I'm going to get a paintbrush, a bit of water there, and you see what happens to that colour? It becomes a bit more oops magical. And if you make mistakes. That's nice too, because it means you're not a machine. Okay, so that is how the aquarelles work. And very, very nice too. In fact, what I recommend is that you, that you do all your crayon work in one go and, and then get the wet paintbrush and, and go over the colours at the very end. Now, in some of these cards, there are areas where there's one big block of colour, like, for example, here, there's, there's quite a lot of yellow. And, you know, in this, uh, this court card here, there's quite a lot of blue. And when I started off, I would take a pencil and I would spend half an hour colouring it in painstakingly with a pencil. But there is an easier way. We're going to use a gouache here. Very nice, too. Designer's gouache. You won't need much, so you don't have to invest too much in that. And another, another hot tip here. If you mask out the edges where the gouache is going to go, it'll be much easier to, to work quickly with big strokes. And that'll make the gouache go on much more evenly. And this is really nice, isn't it, to do this kind of thing? Because if you're like me, and you spend your lifetime, you know, writing books and screenplays and generally being clever and running around and applying for Arts Council grants and, I don't know, making pop records and learning foreign languages and all these things that you do with your brain. It's actually very nice to do something like this, which, as I've said, is, a, is an inner child activity. Look at that. That's very nice, isn't it? To spend time with a blob of yellow like that. And then, you know, on it goes. And what you do with that with that nine is really anyone's guess. But any choice you make, as long as you make it with care and love, will look nice afterwards. That's just the nature of the beast. Because what you're doing is a handmade thing. And in this evil age of, you know, machine-made things, and not even machine-made things, computer-made things, where everything's fake, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, we like a bit of real stuff. It makes us feel nice. You get the general idea, don't you? So that's the, the big areas and that's the small areas. So really, that's all you need to know. I've, I've, I've given you all my secrets. You can now run around and have the best, nicest coloured copy of the Rider Waite that you could possibly find. But what I want to do is I want to show you some of my triumphs because they're so nice. So there's my Knight of Cups. And there's my Queen of Cups, which I'm also very pleased with. And um, So that's all for now. I shall be back in two weeks' time. 
and actually it won't be time for my predictions for November because it'll only be mid-October and I'm going to wait till Sunday the 1st of November for that one. I put out videos every two weeks on Sunday morning at six in the morning Berlin time. So tune in, tell all your tarot friends, like me, follow me, all that stuff. And I hope you have a very pleasant two weeks. Bye.